Hampshire's chalk downlands are ideal for growing crops, so it's no surprise that there are over 1,500 businesses dedicated to producing fruit and vegetables. If there's one crop that's synonymous with Hampshire, it's watercress. Watercress has been grown and harvested here since the 1800s, and it was so vital to the local economy that a dedicated railway line, the Watercress Line, was built to run from here straight into the market in Covent Garden in London. It's January, and I'm on my way to Old Arlesford, next to the River Arl. Mineral-rich springs and pure, fast-flowing streams are what make this county the UK's watercress capital. I'm here to meet two men who've embraced Hampshire's heritage of growing watercress, but have also broken with tradition to start growing a vegetable that's more at home in Japan. Tom and John are the only growers in Europe of one of the world's most expensive vegetables, wasabi. John is the farmer's son who returned to the family business 10 years ago. He started growing wasabi as a brand new enterprise alongside Tom, who's been with the family company for almost 20 years. The pair now hope to tap into a sushi industry worth £70 million in the UK. With the rise of sushi, more and more people are eating better quality sushi, more and more people are making sushi at home. And if you want to eat the best sushi, that should be served with fresh wasabi. John and Tom's wasabi growing plot turned over £350,000 last year. I'm joining them as they embark on another new phase of the business. Good morning. Morning. Morning, I'm Kate. Hi, hi Kate, I'm Tom. Lovely to see you, Tom. Lovely. Are you John over yes. there? Yes, hello, am Kate. I, am I allowed in? Welcome, nice to see you. The springboard to the fledgling wasabi business is the infrastructure of John's family watercress business, which has been here for 30 years. I feel, it feels awful crampling all over all this beautiful, beautiful watercress. Wow. So here we are, surrounded by fields of green. What is it about this area that makes it so perfect for watercress? It's the water. Historically, water has always been, been present here. The farms are built because of the water. Right. And the water is nutrient rich. Yeah. It brings the minerals up from 40 meters below the ground. It runs naturally through the beds and feeds straight back down into the rivers. And what is it about watercress that had this extraordinary level of demand? It was known for its health properties. I right. mean, traditionally in, in Victorian England, uh, watercress would be sold as your daily dose of vitamins. Oh, really? Just so instead of just popping a pill, you just ate a handful exactly of Exactly right. Well, I'm standing here um, with my wellies now getting all the benefit. Is this edible as it is? Of course is? it is, Can yeah. I just yeah, pick no, a bit and... Some. So we can just munch it? Yeah, of course you can, yeah. It's quite peppery at this time of the year. Oh, it's yeah. lovely. Yeah, you get the heat from it as you're chewing it. But you've gone pepperier still, haven't you? Mm. Wasabi is traditionally a Japanese crop that's been produced over there for centuries, and we are starting a little change in that story by bringing it to the UK. Is that happening here? No, but we can, uh, we can take you down and you can have a little look if you fancy. I'd love that. Okay. Yes, please. Good. Right, it's delicious. Mm. Tom and John invested half a million pounds against the family business to pioneer a way of growing wasabi in the UK. The plant has been rarely available here before now, and to recoup on investment, they're banking on it becoming a new, fresh ingredient for chefs and supermarkets across the country. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's all very mysterious and undercover yes, and kind indeed. of secret. Now, You've got a good, flourishing watercress business yeah. with a market that you know about. Why bother growing something Japanese in Hampshire? We were getting phone calls a number of years ago uh, from individuals in America, in uh, Spain, talking about wasabi and said, well, why aren't you looking at wasabi? We didn't know what it was. So we went to London, we tried to f buy fresh wasabi. Nobody had any. That naturally raised the level of interest because we like complicated sort of solutions. <laughs> 
the, the rise of the sushi market uh, okay. helped us as well because yeah. you see more and more sushi places coming and this was five, six, seven years ago when we started and we felt that if we put something there, surely there'll be enough people who want to buy it. Can I go and have a look at it? Because I I have obviously never seen well, it. Well, I'll leave you to it with John. OK. And uh, I'll see you later. All right, brilliant. Thanks. OK, see you later. See you later. While Tom takes charge of the business side, John's passion is the plants, and no other farmer in Europe has successfully grown them. So did you have to go to Japan and basically get them to tell you how to do it? We approached. We were knocked back to some degree. Okay. I mean, we felt that uh, trial and error was going to be the best way for us to learn how to grow this crop in a place that had never been grown before. Right. So we used the know-how that we have from watercress, yeah. and we just started small. Right. So we started with 400 plants. And where did you even get the plants from? The plants came from Japan. Okay. That took a little bit of work. But once to... we were able to get our hands on the plants, yeah. we planted them in several different ways. Yeah. Some of it worked, some of it didn't, and we developed from there. John employs three full-time staff to maintain the wasabi plants, all working alongside head farmer David. David, hello. Kate, lovely to meet you. How different is this to grow than other crops that you've been involved with? It's, it's very sensitive to heat, yeah. heat stress, extreme cold. So we take precautions to, to, to prevent those, like putting the covers as we have them now. Yeah. Uh, and we even double that up in the summertime. Is it possible to see one? Could yeah, we... we can go and pull one from... Can we go and we pull, pull one something up? from further up the top of the bed. Like ginger or turmeric, the valuable part of the wasabi plant is the stem called a rhizome. So, yeah, you put your hands around the, yeah. you know, the biggest rhizomes, which is one there, oh, yeah, and I then can one feel around it. the back. Yeah. And then just give it a gentle tug. John and David built raised beds to ensure the plants would grow successfully. There, there we go. go. Let me shake off the gravel. There you go, the first wasabi. And you can see that there's a rhizome on that particular oh, plant. Oh, yeah, so it's this bit here. That's right, that's the prize. That's the prize. Yes. It took three years of crop development, trial and error before John could harvest his first wasabi. They don't look like plants that grow particularly quickly. No. Even when they're happy and they're growing well in yeah. our climate, they're going to take approximately 18 months to reach harvest. Oh, my goodness. But, of course, it's not until you take the plant out and you break it up and you try it that you know whether or not you're successful. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's a good okay. investment in time. There are now 40,000 plants here, and John has plans to increase sales to over a million pounds next year with the hope of seeing a return on that initial investment. The leaves look delicious. Are they edible as well? Yes, they are. The whole plant is edible. Can I yeah, have just a, eat a bit of that? Yeah. Similar to watercress, the flavour's going to increase as you chew it, the oh, cells. That's lovely. Good flavour. Gosh, it's delicious. So are you thinking now of selling this as well? Yes. What we want to do is to sell these in bunches. Right. Um, so in the same way as watercress, going back to that heritage Very similar again. again. Yeah. Um, and chefs, uh, they're, they're in demand. John plans to make use of every part of the crop, from rhizome to leaf to flowers. None of it will go to waste. They currently sell only the rhizome wholesale. I love where you keep your knife. And online. So, John, when you come to sell these, yeah. are you selling them as that? You'll trim it to here, and, yeah. and that's the piece that you'll sell. If I was to buy this one, mm -hmm. what would it cost me? Uh, online, that's around about uh, 80 grams. Yeah. So it's 25 pounds there. There's another five, uh, eight pounds there. Mm, 40 to 50 pounds. Gosh, that's not bad, actually, That's not bad. Is this it? is a particularly good plant. <laughs> <laughs> It's the time and effort taken in the growing that makes wasabi so expensive. Now, I love wasabi, but I've never seen it other than in a tube, and it's a bright green paste, and it blows your head off. Um, but you are seeing there is a lovely green. But it is very green. It, it is, is very green. Absolutely. And with the imitation product, it's lurid because there's colouring involved. And is it an imitation product? It is. It'll be made up of, of horseradish and mustard and sweetener. Really? Yeah. So the stuff you're getting on a tube is not real it's wasabi? It's not your real wasabi. So do you think it's entirely possible that I have never eaten real wasabi in my life? You've never seen that before, and you've never seen it grated in front of you before. You've never had real wasabi. I feel diddled. <laughs> <laughs> when we clean the plant, what we need is a wasabi of grater. Of course you've got one of those. And then we'll carefully remove these stems, and then we'll get down to about there. And there you can see 
Yes. Yeah, around the outside there's a there's a bit more of a flesh, and yeah. inside is, is the core. So you will just start to grate that. You don't try and do it as fast as you can. You want to do it slowly. Gosh, and it comes out we'll as a paste. And that's it. That is, there's nothing else involved. Only 2% of wasabi consumed in the UK is from the real plant, and it has to be grated fresh. Wow, that's so amazing. Can I? If you try it now, yeah. the chemical reaction's only just started. So you'll have some flavor, but it won't be for another five minutes until it reaches its peak because that chemical reaction is, is taking place But it's now. the sweetness and that lovely pepperiness. It's sort of gentle. It's, right. it's very much in the background So it's at still the developing. So that's why wasabi would always be grated at the table. Three to five minutes, it'll reach its peak. OK. And after 15 minutes, there'll be no more flavour left. That's it. So you'll grate it little and often and carry on eating So the it. idea of preserving it in a plastic tube is kind of a nonsense. It's you never... Can't you can't do it, no. So now that this has had a little more time, that chemical yeah. reaction has progressed. Okay. And uh, you should find that there's more pungency. Okay. And more sweetness. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And then it starts to go up the nose. But in the best possible best way. Best possible way. But still really sweet. John has big plans to create a new market in the UK for his fiery crop. It must feel very frustrating that actually all you're selling is this and the rest is a, effectively a waste product. That's something we want to do right now, okay. is start selling the leaf. It's, right. it's time to develop a market for the leaf. The leaf tastes good. Yeah. There's lots of different ways to eat it. Yeah. You can tempura it, you can have it in a salad. And that's precisely what we're working on right now, is using this leaf and taking it to, um, to a new market. It's something grown here in Hampshire that isn't grown anywhere else in the UK. It's hugely exciting. But in the meantime, I'm going to have another squirt of that because if it only gets better, oh, that is a wonderful one. I'm never going to buy one of those horrible plastic tubes <laughs> ever again. Good. <laughs> In the next four weeks, John will harvest the leaves of the wasabi for the first time. But can they make an impact on the billion pound UK salad market and start creating a bigger profit from their plants? What I really admire about what they've done is that they still have that hunger and that willingness to innovate, to take risks, to do something new. And wasabi really is new, but they've still got to make this work. And I love the fact that they're prepared to look at the leaves as well as the rhizomes to make sure that this very brave enterprise actually does pay off for them. And it's going to be these next few weeks and months that will be the proof of whether they've been absolutely mad or absolutely brilliant.